Okay. Ancient Mahara here with another installment of Q&A about people with borderline personality disorder and their effect on people in mainly significant other relationships, but in any relationship type. Commenter left a question on the video that I did. BPD relationship breakup recycle is, is BPD and codependent need not healthy want. And a commenter thanked me for my knowledge and delivery, found both to be helpful. Thank you for that. And so the question was, do I think that there's room for this person or others to consider that when a person, when your ex with BPD has ghost, has discarded you or ghosted you for the second time in a year, that you should be attempting to resolve the conflict. So should you try to resolve the conflict with a BPD ex? So let me read the whole comment first of all, after they thanked me in, in kind words. I know you always relate everything to untreated BPD partners. Okay, first and foremost, no I don't, but largely. But I also say untreated or not significantly treated. And I know it sounds vague, but it's the best I can do in videos. So. And I would think that, as it will come up here, that this person's partner was in therapy for a year, that's not really significantly treated. And then the fact that they repeated their pattern of devalue discard, again, means what, did, what was happening in that therapy for the year. Because it takes people longer to change some of these more ingrained patterns, but no change in a year of therapy is a big issue. Aside from the reality that people need to see the big red stop sign that is go no contact. So if you resonate with this, what if your BPDX hasn't even had any treatment? Is it going to make it any more reasonable for you to try to readdress reoccurring conflict? So they said that my partner had been consistent with therapy for about a year until the therapist left and he's not been, um, and he's been unable to find a new one. Recently, I've been devalued and discarded. The relationship had been great apart from it happening once before a year ago when the commenter asked uh, to get back together by, as they said, on a Hoover, but what they really mean is a reverse Hoover. So they Hoovered the person that was, is their partner right now, but was their ex last year and got back together. And then the question was, do you think there's room to consider that missing therapy can cause a BPD episode and attempting to resolve the conflict is reasonable? Well, I can't give like a one size fits all answer to this, but what I would say is that it's a big red flag, you know, because a year of therapy depends the modality the person's in. It depends and I don't have a clue why the therapist left, right? Like, did they retire? Did something else happen? Was it a breakdown in the process? Who knows? So I'll give a little bit more of an answer to this commenter, and then maybe I'll just speak a little more generally in a second here, which is just an opinion because I don't know this person, right? And if you're listening and this is relevant and you resonate with it, I don't know you either, so keep that in mind. It's very unfortunate that your partner hasn't been able to find any therapist like right now. I don't know if they're actively looking for one, right? Like, I mean, the commenter didn't share that, obviously, because people don't have to share too much. So the question could be, is this person going to pursue therapy after what happened and perhaps feelings of abandonment by that therapist, which is all really unfortunate. Were they really improving and, and how long does it take because in some modalities of treatment, I mean, sometimes people can make some kind of progress in three to five years that can really impact better relating, you know, but still people with codependency have to have their own healing recovery process as well. You have to consider the damage done and for the same patterns to repeat themselves again, it's not really surprising after only one year of treatment. And again, depends on what the treatment was and how well it was being engaged. What did the person learn? How did they grow? Because they obviously didn't learn enough, heal enough, understand enough or grow enough to not repeat the devalue to discard. 
like almost a year later. And again, treatment for people with BPD, depending on the modality, but according to Dr. John Gunderson, takes between 8 to 16 years. And some people maybe um, get significant work done, like I said, in 3 to 5 years. But that might make a difference in a relationship, but it still won't make the relationship healthy. Because the codependent needs to get their own healing and recovery done as well. And the person with BPD, it can take quite a while to find consistency, to find self. To, I mean, 8 to 16 years is what Dr. John Gunderson quotes. And so the idea that people are much better or relationship worthy or that you should hang in there with them because they're going to do six months or a year of DVT, even though that can really help people. Again, this is just not really what people should be thinking about because it's kind of codependent patterns. And this person said again uh, that, you know, everything was great except for like they got discarded into value a year ago. And then they called, they, they were asking if because he's not in therapy or he or she's not in therapy, would it be a BPD episode? Well, yes, it is, but it's a big red flag, like I said, because it's the second time and, and this person was in therapy for a year, don't know what happened, don't like, don't know who they are, but it suggests that they didn't get a lot of work done. And so I think it's really important for people in this position, like the commenter, to focus on the negative for a bit because they were saying everything was great except for these two devalued discards. Well, you need to really focus on was it really? What else did you go through? How much pain is being devalued to discarded the first time? And then wanting the person back, which goes to what I was talking about in the video that this commenter made the comment on, which is the codependent's unhealthy need to to get the partner back, it just as it in a different way for different reasons, it's unhealthy for the person with BPD to hoover the person that they just devalued and discarded. So I suggested that, and I would suggest to anybody who's in this position, first of all, I'm out here to work with you if I resonate with you and you need to work with someone, people with codependency, with these questions and all different iterations of relationships and has the person been to therapy, have they had a bit of therapy, not therapy, and then the same thing happens over again, that's really a big red stop sign. But codependents often don't see that because the cognitive dissonance of this commenter, with all due respect, sounds very active. So they're remembering it was all really good except for two devaluations and discards. So I suggest uh, they're not really thinking about the negative. So I suggest maybe they think about that and what was painful about that a bit more. The fact that it was all great until they were devalued twice and discarded twice. Well, again, big stop sign. So the question I, I would leave you with if you have codependency is if this resonates with you and to the commenter, what about being devalued to discard twice? And in, in this person's case, the person had been to therapy for almost a year. And in your case, maybe they haven't started therapy at all. Or maybe they're in therapy. But just being in therapy doesn't mean they're getting the work done. You have to remember that part and how long the work takes. And then when somebody devalues you to discard and, and they're gone, that's when people need to go no contact. That's not when people need to be reverse hoovering, as this commenter did, to get to get the ex back, or to allow the BPD ex at the time to hoover you back. This is why no contact is so important. And so the question I would leave you with, among other things here, is if you resonate with this, right, or if you've been devalued and discarded, and this person, commenter, was devalued and discarded twice within a year. So how does that happen? And yet the commenter doesn't see the need to take care of themselves. Can you resonate with that? Are you wanting an ex back or hoping to hear and get a hoover from an ex because it was pretty good? Like, it, like what I hear from clients all the time, it was really great until it was really horrible. So do you think that it, that it makes more sense to pursue a relationship, whether it's ended once or twice or more times, in that recycling that's hurting you more and more and that is strengthening the ingrained repetition compulsion cycles within codependency. 
it's taking you in the wrong direction. And you might not realize what's underpinning that for you if you're a codependent and you have and you resonate with this. And so that question again was, how does somebody get devalued and discarded and maybe hurt otherwise during relationships, right? During the first iteration and the second iteration of the relationship, maybe not this commenter, but most people. So how do you do that, experience that and hurt like that and not realize that it's time, it's a big red stop sign and it's time to take care of yourself. And I know that what I'm saying is easier said than done for sure. And I asked that question of the commenter and to people in general who might resonate with this because I think it would be helpful for the commenter and others to think about this. And, and I asked the question in a very compassionate way with no judgment whatsoever because when I'm speaking in videos, I have to be so vague. And there are so many moving pieces when I work with clients, you know, that I can help more with because I'll hear more of the details, understand more about the relationship and things of that nature. But if you think that after a really rocky relationship and then, a, a, you know, being devalued to discard and then you maybe who reverse Hoover them and they come back or they Hoover you and you let them back and then it happens again. See, you shouldn't even go around that first time. It's really, that's the place to stop. That's the place to get into your own healing recovery process and definitely start moving forward, which is really, really painful for so many people. And a lot of that pain isn't just about the relationship that just ruptured. A lot of that pain goes back to family of origin and the reason why you have codependency. So I think it's really important that people realize that it's it's not reasonable to go back and attempt to resolve the conflict that with, with a person with BPD that created the devalue and discard or that hurt you in other ways and then maybe you got ghosted or devalued and ghosted, devalued and discarded. It, it's not reasonable. It's not healthy. It's codependency. It's active, significant to severe codependency. And the fact that things can be, oh, so good when they're good and so bad when they're bad, I would urge you to think more about why that really matters, no matter how much pain you're in, if this resonates with you, because you really need to learn how to have a healthier relationship to and with yourself and to value yourself more than to keep going around in circles with people with BPD because the other thing is even if they are seeking treatment and this is like about a like 95% of the time to 98% of the time you can't hang around and wait to see if they get the work done you can't hang around and wait to see if they will change and trying to resolve that conflict again and again and again is your codependency so what is the conflict from your family of origin in, in your childhood that you really need to resolve? That's the question. And that's what I'm out here to help people with. So I hope that was helpful. I hope it gives food for thought. I hope that the commenter feels like it was a reasoned way of putting it because as you know, I'm here to keep it real to help you heal. So there might be a little bit of challenge in what I say, but I hope that you realize I'm, I'm really just compassionately trying to help people to think about this in different ways because the more you repeat the patterns and the more opportunity any opportunity that you give to the borderline to repeat the pattern of how they hurt you you're living out something from your family of origin that might be not consciously aware to you so the answer is it's not reasonable and it's not in your best interest to pursue a person with BPD and wanting them back to get the relationship back because as this commenter's experience is another example of, and I mean that with respect, they cycle around and, and when you go back to the relationship, if you can, or the ex will come back to you with VPD, it just speeds up the cycle and these things happen over and over because therapy for people with BPD to change these kinds of things and to be able to be healthy enough to relate in relationships takes a significant amount of time and when a person is in therapy and you're really hoping and, and thinking that'll make things better, there's no way that you can really assess or know if they're actually engaging the process 
and really getting the work done that they need to get done and really doing some healing work that's going to really produce change in somebody with BPD. So I hope that was helpful. And it's really important that people stop wanting back what didn't work. It's a codependent pattern at core. And it's not in your best interest. And if you think you're hurting a lot now, keep recycling with these people and you're going to be hurting over and over and over again. And every time people land in that spot of ghosted or discarded again after devaluation, it hurts even more. You go back to ground zero. And remember, people with BPD don't come back idealizing you. They might show you something like that in the Hoover. But look at my playlist on Hoovers on the channel because... That's all about the borderline hoovering you to get what they need. And in this case, with this commenter, again, with all due respect, question being asked is all about what this commenter not only wants, the unhealthy want of it all, but the need that they have to try to make the impossible work out. Take care.